Ladies and gentlemen, Twisted Fate is the strongest pick in the game at the moment. In the bot lane, in the mid lane, even in the top lane. This champion is excelling after the AD changes that happened in the previous patch. This guy right here playing Twisted Fate, he has gone from Masters to Challenger. 1000 LP, the number one AD carry on the server above players like Gumiyushi, Viper. How? By simply locking in ADTF and dominating in the bot lane. You run Ghost, you run Flash, you run Fleet Footwork. It's pretty simple. The guy's stats at the moment is absurd. The build path is a little bit different than what you're thinking. I know I've seen a couple of guys still trying out that old Triforce TF build. Incorrect. I've also seen people doing on hit, just only on hit. Incorrect. The build might make you... Might surprise you a little bit, might make you cringe. Um, but there's a reason this guy right here... Nice hook. Red card Andy, get a couple autos off. It's actually insane, like you will out damage any AD carry. Plus you're able to side lane in the mid to late game and make picks. Now Twisted Fate's not an easy champion. If you're bronze and you haven't played this and you pick it in the bot lane, you're probably not going to carry. You're probably going to grief. But that's okay. Do it in your normal games and then, nice. And then bring it out in ranked. There's something nice about having a point and click CC AD carry on your team. This guy uses the Musketeer Twisted Fate skin. I don't know why. I don't like it. I think it's ugly. I think all of it is gross. Twisted Fate skin tier, li tier list. There's different tier lists for AP versus AD, but I definitely think. The AD, the Cut Purse, and the Tango one. They're the cleanest. For the AP, then you have High Noon, and you have Underworld. Now, of course, I am endorsed by Riot Games to say that, but that's the truth. Insta Cleanse comes out from the Varus Ghost Porok. We're zooming. You need Ghost with this pick, by the way. You need it. It's so essential. You'll find out later in the game how it works. And yeah, I'm pretty sure he's hovering above 51% win rate. Top, mid, and AD carry. I haven't seen a couple of players use him support. I haven't seen any jungle. Oh, I think I saw one jungle TF actually in my game when I was in EU. And it didn't seem too bad, but I would not recommend it. Lee Sin hovers for the gank. Okay, I'm not sure if I like this Lee. I'm not sure what their plan is to stop this either. It's completely taking over high elo in, in Korea. Like all, if you look at any of the top AD carry players like Guma, they've like in their match history, they're all testing things out on ADTF right now. Because they made his eight, he made his Qs have 80 ratios. But not only that, it just the E damage from this stack deck is too much. As we go for our first base. Usually Berserker Greaves early is really nice. We actually go for the static. We are going for static shiv. I know it's cringe. I know we are not about static shiv on this channel, but that's what every single high elo Korean, even Chinese players like Uzi are doing at the moment. They rush static shiv on Twisted Fate. They synergize the movements you got the fleet footwork as well. It's, you know, it's a little bit of a problem, as one of my old friends would say. Pretty stagnant early game. If you can pair it with something like a Lulu, maybe even a Yumi, I don't mind it. As we might even get a 1v1 down in the bot lane here. You can see the Varus coming in. Lulu roaming towards the Void Gwobs. Emax as well. Level 5 to level 4. Gets the card, gets the stack decks, autos. Q goes wide. Flash, gold. One auto. People will just... I'm not even kidding. These AD carriers will just walk up and die like that very often. They think because you're... They think because it's a TF that you're not going to have any DPS. You're only burst. 
But because you're maxing the E and you're just ordering, you you will out DPS most AD carries. Like it's almost just bra it's not I'm not gonna say I never say anything's free LP. I'm not gonna say brain dead, but it's pretty damn close. Um What are the chances he pulls gold there? I mean if he pulled blue it might have just been a one shot straight up. It may have just been a one shot. We're level six now, which means we can start looking towards ganking. And don't even be afraid to use the Twisted Fate ultimate to get back in a lane faster. So we have Ghost. I'm gonna hover in and get a little bit of spacing. Try and land in the gold. No one's gonna move in. It's crazy to me when, like, this guy was Masters, nowhere near Challenger, and then he just... This champion gets buffed, he sees a pocket, he spams it, and then he just auto-hits Challenger. That's when you know a champion's broken. Another one that's been broken recently is Alawi, which I might do a video about. So we go in, we've hit Ghost. Just lay those autos in, baby. Lay those autos in. Gold card comes through. Double kill. Oh, Varus, you're a naughty boy. Don't even think about it. Varus is doing well in the CS department, but once we get that static shiv and we start wave clearing, it's going to be easy peasy. AD carry TF at Worlds. Worlds is so far away. We have the meta now compared to what the meta is at Worlds. We probably have no idea. Although Maokai would probably be, be, be played. I just feel like Maokai's kit fundamentally always finds a way in. Silly little annoying champion as we do hit the Static Shiv at 9 minutes. Static Shiv, it did get a little bit of a nerf, but it's still so useful on a champion like Twisted Fate. We are so damn slow, honestly. Maybe a dive if he needs to. I really like what the virus is doing. This is what... How many freaking times, guys, does your... Your support roam and then you walk up and die here and you know you shouldn't have done it. It tilts me so, so, so much. As Twisted Fate just used the ultimate there just to see the vision, by the way. He didn't even use it to regroup. He just looked to see where the Varus was, and now they're going to hammer the tower in. God, life is easy. All the plates. Great job. He already has like a, almost a 2k gold lead. I can actually get the double there, not bad. Double energize, we go rapid fire up next, guys. Rapid, rapid fire cannon on TF is a no brainer. Comes in. Oh my god, he didn't get to land anything. Oh, that's so unfortunate. Fritz, of course. Spacing. Blitzcrank. Get that hook, get that hook. Rapid Fire can on TF is just for that extra range on your gold cards, guys, but now that crits are helping you to get more gold with your passive, it's also a little bit of an extra gold income, so. It's crazy the changes they made to TF. I, don't, I really didn't think he needed any changes at all. He was situated fine, maybe a bit of an AP damage buff. I don't know why they implement any thing to do with his AD. I have no idea why they did that.
So we are 3-0. Good that he has a Cassante that can drop into the side lane. If you had something like a Syndra, this game would... Oh my god, this game would be a little bit awkward. Can we get a gold? Red card, Andy. Yeah, if you had a Syndra and Oriana that didn't want to side lane as much, it probably would get awkward. So we're going to drop that in. Head back into the base now. I think we can get our... Ooh, rapid Fire Cannon. 12 minutes in, I better do that at 3-0 is insane. Oh, he gets his Lucidity Boots. It's interesting, how's it go Greaves? I swear Berserker Greaves, when I verse 80 TFs, it just is so valuable. But I guess he wants lower flash, ghost cooldowns, better card rotations. And I did see Faker play an 80 TF recently, but it was crit. He played, not just crit, he went IE. And he lost. Giga Chad. Swifties? Oh, dude, I love Swifties. Swifty boots are so underrated. I get a dragon. Great setup. Ultimate is almost up. The Trank goes in, Polymorph, Gold Card, just kiting and waiting. Put the Gold Card onto the LeBlanc, and now it's just an auto. See if he's able to get any good autos off. This is so awkward for him. Look at it. Maud comes out, and we're ghosting. Great spacing. Not dead yet. Whole team wiped. Oh my lord. He actually just couldn't get in that fight. That was so damn awkward. He does have ultimate. He might be able to make a pick somewhere here, though. No rapid fire cannon yet. Yippee! Finally, the ult comes out. We're going to find that Mordekaiser. And you will find so many picks on ADTF like this, where someone's just randomly in the side lane. And for some reason, when you play ADTF, they think about your ultimates a lot less than when you play AP. Don't ask me why. I don't know why. They just don't look out for it as much. All right, rapid fire. Rapid fire is finally done. This is where the pick starts to feel a little bit too too good, and I think this is where the win rate just skyrockets in like lol analytics sites. Okay. Gold card. Rapid fire. Nothing follows from it though. You got Cassante up top side with the mod. Gold card. Blitzcrank hook. Gold card. Echo's worth a bounty. I really don't want him to die. We get another gold. Blitzcrank looking for another hook. He does get it. Twisted Fate actually has to flash there. We're just going to put our autos down. Put our gold cards down. Gets the, the lease in. Probably going to go down to the Mordekaiser here. Five and one though. Jesus, man. Korean Solo queue is so insane. 3,000 gold lead over the Varus.
And now we're going to be able to go for the on hit. This is when you really start packing a punch. You're able to get a lot more damage. He goes for the Noon Quiver, and usually you go into the Kraken. Let's see how much his passive is generated in this game. So he's got he's got 500 gold from just from the minions, and then 50 extra from the crit. So he's only got 50 extra gold from the crit factor, which is the change, one of the changes they made to Twisted Fate recently. Ultimate once again is up. You can't look for picks onto the Mordekaiser because he has the ultimates. As he is going to go for it regardless. Mord's ult actually down. I was trolling. We just two shot him. What is Mordekaiser ult cooldown? I thought he would have it up by now easily. We have Dragon in 40 seconds. Mordekaiser in 30. Doesn't look like we're done. Hook lands. Gold card is free. We've hit the ghost here. And a lot of people will see this and think there's not enough damage in his kit. But trust me, there is. And once you hit three item spike, it's going to be way too much. Over the gold. See if LeBlanc goes in. If she W's, gold card. I like his spacing. Now, obviously, I'm the biggest Twisted Fate critic. I've watched a thousand Dope reviews. He's definitely an 80 carry player. Let's just say that. Is he a Twisted Fate player? He's decent. I've watched Gross Score as well. Oh, 1,700 gold. Should have enough for the crack in here. Now watch the damage output on this shit. You need to limit test. You need to limit test on this champion to understand your damage numbers because it's nothing like what you think. You have way more damage than you think at all times. Brackens with the stack decks. Yeah, nice. Great spacing, three shot the Lulu. And it just feels weird for the enemy to have to try and deal rapid fire. To try and deal with an 80 carry that has a, a point and click stun on a three second cooldown. As that's a pretty obvious Baron setup here. Eight, one, and six. It's actually felt really smooth for him so far. And I really wish I could play some ADTF right now. I'm doing my Kiana and Yasuo challenge to challenge up. It's going really well. I'm pretty close. Everybody that is watching is believing in me. I'm currently Emerald, and I've been here for a week, so... Yeah. Enough about me. Enough about me and my, my struggles. No one wants to hear about me. Am I crying to sleep every night? TF. I was actually pretty close to dying. I don't know how much his, pass his crit gold's got him at 88 here. Pretty much a cannon minion. As we make our way towards our QSS. I love this. I love the QSS. Means he can ultimate onto the Mordekaiser and he can QSS the Mordult. He can QSS the Varus, the Polymorph. We have all sums. Take it. Oh. I swear they ping on this server 10 times more than anything. Okay, Ghost has been hit. We're coming in, looking for the Penta. Let's see if we land it. Gold card elite. Getting all the autos through. And TF insta cleanse. TF crit autos. The animation is very pronounced, is probably the right word. 
Sweet. This, the, it's just stupid how much at three items you start dishing out with the stack deck and the Kraken. It needs to get nerfed. Dude, just literally run it. Go for the end. That'll do, that'll do, that'll do. Not but a mole running. 2700. And I wonder what they will nerf about it. Because even APTF's performing so well. I wonder if they're going to bring down the ratios. And then just completely nuke him and then he can't get played again. Classic right. Yeah, Fault comes in. Oh. That was a troll. You can see these like 80 carry type TF players waste a lot of their ults, I'll be honest. They're not mid laners like us that uh, make really good use of it. We got 3k gold in the tank. That is going to be the Navori Quick Blades, ladies and gentlemen. This is pretty much almost capping out at full build. Got to be careful. Wait for it. Now we unleash. Now we unleash. Does have flash. Don't think he needs to use it. Gets his 13th kill. Mordekaiser comes out. Runs our ultimate up. We still got 45 seconds. It's the ghost. This is going to be a little bit excessive. Such a sick build. So Quick Blades, your attacks reduce your non-ultimate ability by 12%. It's so like when you're just absolutely spamming autos and you're... You just always have a gold card available. Oh, careful, guys. Guys, careful. Is it worth it to Q? I think so. You can, like, kind of spam your Q and buffer it so it doesn't feel awkward. Gold card. LeBlanc uses... Two W's. <laughs> Flash. Oh, the Varasalt goes wide. The E doesn't land. And we're out. Yeah, I think if you're just standing and delivering, don't think about your Q. Just think about getting gold cards and just delivering your E's. As we wait for a couple of reinforcements and come back in. Man, this Blitz has been a bit of a game changer. Am I right? Gonna wait for the more to come out. Good night, sweet Blitzcrank. So dumb. And I know a lot of like, I've, I've seen Tobias fade. I've seen a lot of people play ADTF over the years. And he definitely always has really good late game output. It's just that now that it's extremely stat efficient. As we hit full build, get the elixir. Um, it's just his win rates topped over. So why not spam it and get some free low and escape whatever division you're in? Spe especially if you're an emerald because that division is hell. I've never experienced anything like emerald. I never want to experience it again. After this video is recorded, I am going to go and play 57 games and win every single one to get out of Emerald. That's how many games it's going to take because 
Nothing comes fast in that elo. Losses come fast. That's what's coming. That that is what comes fast. Oh, that was a good gold card. Blitzcrank, finish that. Yes, baby. Red card, yeah. Red, red buff should finish that. 18 kills. It doesn't even feel like 18. It just feels... We're going to ult in. Gets the gold. No, not quite. 20 bomb, please. Like, you you AD, but your card still one-shot and crit. Little bit OP. He ends up with around about 1,100 extra gold from his passive. ADTF in Korea, gentlemen. It's already taken over. Get in quick before it's nerfed. It's fun to play. It's extremely... You can play this top, mid... And bot lane. Three rolls. I'm going to play with that food a little bit. That's going to be it from me today, gentlemen. Hopefully you have enjoyed the video. And I will see you all in the next one. Good night.